I never know what I'm gonna what I'm gonna say when I get on that stage where once my heart open up. I don't know what I'm gonna say. Just the feeling hit my soul and I respond to it. like 62 years old doing this for the first time in his life and performing these songs that are deeply emotional to him, deeply, you know, uh, personal to him. Never felt the pain. Oh. He delivers it from his gut. I mean, I've, heard, I've talked to people in the crowd who say that like, they've never seen Charles before, they just see him go up on stage and say hello and they can feel it in their gut. Like, oh my God, who is this guy? You know, like, and he hasn't even sung yet. Are you? When he sings, you know, just one, you know, ooh, and it's like, what? Wow. They don't see me crying. I mean, he's just kind of such an amazing figure. If you see him perform live, you're not going to forget it. My sister Virginia, she said, Charles, you got to go see this guy, James Brown. I didn't know too much about him at that time. And he came running out on the stage, took the microphone and threw it and turned around and flipped. And I said, oh, I mean, I was just mesmerized. I said, wow, I want to be something like that. Went home, got me a, a broom, tied a, tied a piece of string on it, throw it, pull it back, and kept throwing it, and kept flipping around and catch the mic on the floor. Got better and better and better. I knew then that's what I really want to be. Well, I left home at age 14. I thought I wasn't wanted, so I just left and lived in the streets, living in um, old cars, living in abandoned buildings, and living in the subway train. Those, that was my home. I think it was getting very hard on me. I didn't look good. My parents didn't look good. I was going down. I was dirty, funky. And I saw myself getting worse and worse. And I said, oh, oh I got to get out of this, this environment. No time for dreaming. Dreaming, dreaming. Got to get on up, get up, and do my thing. Ooh. No I was back in, the, in those segregation days where a lot of racial stuff was going on. And I had to deal with a lot of things. I had to keep my mouth shut to keep my job. Back in those days, you could, if you stay quiet, you got a job. He like, you know, almost died in California from pneumonia and moved back to New York and he struggled with, um, you know, racial, just racial prejudice his whole life and get, you know, and being really poor growing up, you know, poor and leaving his home when he was 14. And all this stuff he just kind of had trapped inside. I came back from the, uh, California to New York. I was homeless. Can we sit down and have a little champagne? I want to know. Oh, baby, I really want to know. Gabe had the idea, like, hey, we, got, we found this singer who sings like James Brown, pretty incredible, and we got this group of guys who play music kind of influenced by James Brown as well as Dyke and the Blazers and the Meters and Fela and what have you. And um, Gabe brought Charles down to a rehearsal in Staten Island. And I'll never forget, he just kind of started like, uh, he was sitting down, he just kind of like started tapping his leg and then he kind of stood up and started doing like his hip dance. And then he asked for a microphone and he started singing on the spot. And um, that was the starting point for this whole thing. If I didn't love my mama, I would hold it to my heart. 
Cause you was the one I want. Uh, now there's a lyric, Bradley. Wait, wait, what did you just say? Well. Uh, gave it to my mama, it was close to my heart, but you were the one I want? Yeah. Wait, wait, what, what was that exactly? Say that again? I love my mom, so I had to give it to her, but it was you. What the hell did you say? What the hell does it say? Oh, Tom, you know how to fast that thing go out of my ass. Can you, like, rewind that back, like, 30 seconds so I can hear what he said? I give a lot to Tom. Tom told me a lot of things. I didn't believe him. Now, CB, this ain't no Bobby Womack track, man. You gotta, I, was just you gotta... finna, I was just finna start a singing. All right, that's too much, man. You gotta start singing in the beginning. There's a boom. The drums give you a boom. He helped me so much. He brought a lot of my character out of me. It's my mama I truly love, but it's only you I want to think of. Give it to me, baby. Ah. That is about the restless pain any one human being can feel. At that time, I needed somebody to open up to. And Tom, I don't know why. He happened to be the one that I came to his house, we would sit on the patio, we started talking, then he got a cassette, started taping everything I was talking, what I was saying. He said, Charles, you should put this in music. I said, Tom, I can't do that. Every time I started singing it, I would break down. But he kept taping it. I woke up this morning. My mama, she was crying. After that, it was just like the vision was incredibly clear for me. I was just like, OK, there's something really special happening here. Your brother is gone. These were like direct stories that turned into songs for us. He wanted to give up a million times in, in, in life, and he never gave up. And it's just like, you know, thank God for that, man. Everybody tell me, said, Charles, since Jane Brown gone, the torch is yours. Now, at my age, I gotta keep my health and strength and be strong to produce what I've been always want to give. Why is it so hard? I'm no greater than you and no greater than nobody on this earth. But I know inside this body, there's a spirit. And the spirit seeks to do righteous things and be humble. It is so hard to make it in America. Knowing what Charles has gone through and all the, the hell he's lived through and overcome and how he could still be so positive and so loving to everybody he meets, to strangers. He has so much love for strangers, you know? He's almost like a like a saint or something, you know, or like an angel or something. I don't know. He's like he's just it makes him kind of like just a superior human being to be so loving. To make it in America. Thank you. Keep going. Keep your faith. Don't give up. You got to find that strength in yourself. You got to find that love. If you find that love in yourself, then the Creator will smile on you because you're giving love to humanity, to all people. I don't care what you are, but it's one thing I know. All of you believe in love.